we have seen various divisions of brain. Now we will take up individual parts and we are starting with the first part that is prosencephalon. And prosencephalon means the forebrain. And in this forebrain, we would take all these three parts which are there. Starting with olfactory lobes. Olfactory lobes, when we saw the structure using that model, we realized that these are small structures completely covered by the largest part that is cerebrum and that is why they are seen only when we turn the brain from its ventral side. So one pair of these lobes are present and each lobe has an anterior swollen part, a bulb-like part and a posterior narrow part. So this is one and this is the other one. This is how the pair is. So, the swollen part is known as the olfactory lobe or olfactory bulb and this narrow part is known as the olfactory tract and these two together make the olfactory lobes. So, this is one pair. They are solid, small structures and from this tract, they are connected from the here, this part, it is connected to, connected to olfactory region of temporal lobe. So, temporal lobe is the part of cerebrum and in that temporal lobe, there is the olfactory region to which these tracts are connected and as the name tells us the function is associated with smell so detection of smell this is the function of olfactory lobes and they are visible from ventral side of the brain because it's completely covered with the cerebral hemispheres so this is first part of prosencephalon or forebrain the second part of Prosencephalon is cerebrum, which is also known as cerebral hemispheres. And why are they known as hemispheres? And the reason why they are known as hemispheres because they are into two halves. These two halves are connected with each other, but if we draw the brain seen from the dorsal side, then the brain is going to look like this. This is one half which is visible to us and this is going to be the other half. So, what is visible to us from dorsal side is something like this. And there is a deep longitudinal fissure which separates these two parts. So these are the two cerebral hemispheres separated by a longitudinal fissure which is known as cerebral fissure. And that is why these are the two halves which are known as the cerebral hemispheres. And there is a deep depression. Plus, these two are connected by a C-shaped structure at the bottom. So, we will see this again when we see it with the help of the model. That if this is, again, up now we are drawing it from the lateral side. This is the dorsal view. If we see the lateral view, what is visible to us is an Suppose we have taken a section, then here we are going to see a C-shaped structure which is actually made up of transverse myelinated exons and this is known as corpus callosum. 
Corpus callosum, it is the connection between two hemispheres. Connection between two cerebral hemispheres. And this connection is characteristic feature or this uh, corpus callosum is characteristic feature of mammals. It is made up of myelinated axons. And the important thing that it is characteristic of mammals. So these two hemispheres are connected with the help of the C-shaped structure. So if we just try to understand that these two are hemispheres, so this is where the connection is. If we see it from the top, we see this depression. And if we separate it, we see this connection in the middle. And that connection is this corpus callosum. The outer surface of cerebrum is not smooth. It is thrown into folds. So from outside, we find such kind of ridges and furrows. This is to increase the surface area. These bulges, these bulges or these ridges, they are known as gyri and the depressions, they are known as sulci. So there are gyri and sulci on the surface so that the area, surface area increases and that would be able to accommodate more and more neurons. Now, as we have taken the section through it, the outer part is made up of cortex and it is known as cerebral cortex. The outer part is cerebral cortex and the inner part is the medulla. And in case of brain, the outer part that is cortex is gray matter and the inner is white matter. So this is gray matter and this is the white matter. We have seen earlier gray matter means where the cell body or the cyton of neuron is and the white matter is where only the exon fibers are there. So this is the lateral view. Now, as we say that the surface is not smooth, there are ridges and furrows. There are certain depressions or certain sulci which have become very deep and because of that deep depression, each cerebral hemisphere has been divided into four lobes. So again, we are drawing a lateral view of the cerebral hemisphere and we would see how these lobes are divided. So this lobe, which is visible to us from the front, this is called the frontal lobe. The surface is not smooth. It has these kind of depressions. This is frontal lobe. The lobe which is at the back here, or this is parietal lobe. The lobe which is at the back side is occipital lobe and there is a lobe here which is called the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe. Now how is this part separated and how do we see these uh, depressions and the lobes? As we said that the surface is not smooth so I'm going to draw those sulci and gyri. These are the depressions which are visible and here, the depression gets deeper. So, because of this deep depression or the fissure, now the upper part has been separated into a front lobe and a lobe which is at the back. This fissure, this depression, which is separating the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe is known as central fissure. This is called central fissure. The depression which was separating the two halves, that is cerebral hemispheres, is cerebral fissure. And the depression which separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe is central fissure. Then, from here again, there are 
sulci and gyri in the parietal lobe and there is again a depression. This separates parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. This depression or fissure is known as parieto occipital fissure. This is parieto occipital fissure. Now again coming to the parts, this is the occipital lobe and now the frontal and parietal are separated from the temporal lobe. So here there is a deep fissure like this which is actually separating the frontal and parietal from the temporal. This one is known as lateral or salvian fissure. Salvian, salvian fissure. So, each cerebral hemisphere is separated into or is divided into four lobes. And this separation is due to formation of little deep depression. Normal small depression are known as sulci. When this depression gets little deeper, we start calling them fissures. One de such depression is between frontal and parietal. This is the anterior side. This is anterior side. And this one is the posterior side. So, anterior is frontal. It is separated from the parietal lobe by a deep depression, which is known as the central fissure. Parietal from occipital, again, with the help of a depression which is known as parieto occipital because it is separate, separating parietal from occipital. And there is a depression which is separating frontal parietal from temporal lobe. So this temporal lobe would also have these kind of sulci and gyri. So this separation or this fissure is known as lateral fissure or sylvian fissure. So this is how each hemisphere each half has four lobes and because we have seen it from one side we are able to see those four lobes now we will see the same structure using the model so this is our model of the brain that we have and now we will try to see the same parts using this the first part is olfactory lobes and as we said they are visible only when we see it from the ventral side these blue structures, paired structures which we have drawn here, that is the highlighted blue parts. These are the olfactory lobes. The upper anterior part is swollen, that is the bulb part. And the narrower lower part, that is this blue line which is going deep, these are olfactory tract. So these lobes are visible only if we turn the brain from ventral side. Now, if we see the brain from dorsals. Actually, we are seeing the maximum part is the cerebrum. That is the second part that we are talking of, of forebrain. Now, if we hold it like this, this is the dorsal view. The view which I have drawn for you is this one. And as you can see, a middle depression, this is the central fissure that we are talking of, which separates the two halves. Now, I'm separating these two halves so that we see the connection. So these, this is the brain part and I'm separating it into two halves. So we are cutting it, for example, into two halves. Now this is one half which is visible. The other half was connected in the C-shaped band that is the corpus callosum. And now let us talk about these lobes which are there. We have seen this lateral part and now I'm holding it for you like this. This lobe is the frontal lobe. This is the frontal. This is the anterior part. Then here is a slight blue line which separates the frontal lobe from this lobe which is at the top, upper or back end. That is the parietal lobe. And this depression which is going to separate the frontal and the parietal is this central fissure. Now, Occipital lobe is at the back here. This lobe is occipital. That is this part. This is the, not this one. This is the cerebellum part. 
So this part is occipital row. Suppose I remove this cerebellum part also. So if I remove the cerebellum, then this is only the cerebral hemisphere which we have. Now, as I'm holding it like this, this is the frontal lobe. This is the parietal lobe. This is the occipital lobe and temporal lobe. The, there's a depression here, which is going to separate frontal from parietal. This depression is known as central fissure. Then there is a depression which is going to separate the parietal from occipital. This one. This is known as parieto occipital. And this is the depression which is separating frontal parietal from temporal. And this is the lateral fissure. So this is the side view of only cerebral hemisphere. If we don't take care of this, this is the medulla part which is visible to us. So this is only the cerebral hemisphere seen from the lateral side and each hemisphere have four lobes. This is the anterior side. So frontal, top back is parietal, occipital and temporal lobe. And there are these depressions or fissures which make or separate these lobes. If we take a section through this, then we are going to see outer cortex and inner medulla part. After this will come the to inside structure of this cerebral hemisphere.